the last video, we finished up adding our tasks to projects. And the way that works is you create a new project. You can add tasks accordingly. Create a new one here and add a new task, task one. If the task is completed, we send off an Ajax request thanks to our stimulus JS setup. And I'll go ahead and display it as completed thanks to the styles. So if we re-render the page, it will be completed. Un uncheck it, it'll stay that way and so on and so forth. So the concept of the app is almost feature complete. Um, very simple app, like I said in the beginning. I wanted to make something real world, kind of give you the, the workflow that I kind of take in terms of creating something like this. Um, so the next thing I want to do is think about how we can add a shared association of users to a project. And right now, a project belongs to a user. So any person who creates a project, it's just going to belong to them. There's no way another user can actually, they can maybe see the project, but they can't even do anything with it. So the way we can do it to get the whole goal of this tutorial is to kind of get the subscription logic of emails aligned for those users if a task or a project is manipulated. So let's get the projects and the users set up accordingly. So what I want to do is go back to our model there and start back there. So let's go to the project model. Right now we have a belongs to user, which like I said, that's that's important to have for the basis of if a user creates a project, it belongs to them and they are the author of said project. But what that doesn't do is allow other users to have access to it. So what we can do in that case is below the belongs to user, we can actually have as many users too. But we're gonna do it through association project users. And remember that if you're following along from the beginning, we created another model called project user. And that's going to be what this is all about. It's going to be a um, has many through method that allows us to talk through another model to get more data around those things. One gotcha here is when you add a has many through, you kind of need to add the has many part first. Otherwise, it'll kind of do things backwards for you. So make sure has many project users is first in the line of the has many through. So you need both of these to make this actually work. Now we'll need to do the same thing in the user model, but just a little bit different. So we'll say has many project user. Actually, it's, it's actually completely the same. So it's for project users, but we'll also need to say has many user or projects comma through project users. And then if you go back to the project user, this is all ready to go. Since we did that in the generation in the beginning, it just belongs to a user, belongs to a project. So essentially what this does in your, in your views or wherever else, you can actually just say like project.users or project.project users to get access to those users now that are associated. Instead of saying like, capturing an array of IDs of users on the, on the project itself. That could get hairy instead of letting a, another database table handle that work. So that'll make more sense, I think, coming up. Um, for now, though, I want to just get the model error taken care of. Now we can go back to our project uh, index and uncomment this line, or show, excuse me, uncomment this line. And I think it should still render fine. Project users. Oh, I have that plural. That should be project users. There we go. So since I'm part of this user of projects, I can actually edit this project. So that's how that's working. It's a collection of users in this case. Now you could make that back to the, the format of only the person who created the project can edit it, but I figured if it's a, a group of users, you might want the group to be able to edit it as well. So now our project, when we create a new one, we don't actually have a way to assign users to a project. We need a way to do that. And there are a gargantuan amount of ways you could do this. The quickest and easiest for this point of this tutorial is a, a checkbox um, collection, what I'm calling. 
or collection check boxes, which is actually a helper method, part of Rails helper form method that we can use. Um, so in the actual project form, we'll render a new field just below the description. And it's going to be a collection check boxes. On it, we'll actually have the product as the object we're talking to. We need to render the user IDs and user.all ID name. So a lot going on here. The object we're correlating this form to is the project itself. Um, within it, we'll have user IDs, which are, we're going to pass in as what we're going to permit to add to the project. Since we just did that new uh, correlation has many users through project user, we can go ahead and do that um, accordingly. So that allows us to actually have that happen. And then on the front end, this part, these three things are what are actually being displayed in the, the checkboxes themselves. So it'll be looping through all the users in the database. You could change this to something else, maybe more scoped. Um, the ID will be the value in the, the checkbox. And then the name will actually be what outputs as the view uh, label. Now you could kind of tweak this to do like a do block and then render custom checkbox and label text. But I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, definitely check out the docs if you need to do that. Okay, so if we go to this page, let's just assume it'll render. Uh, so user model the project. Let me double check my typing. Ah, I need project users there. There we go. So I only have one user in the database, and that's me. So if, why don't we create another one real quick? I'll log out first. I'm going to use the infamous J. Smitty, John Doe, or John Smith. Hey, Smitty, Gmail. Cool. So I have access. I mean, I could see these projects. It should probably be scoped to your particular team, but I didn't get that far because I don't feel like coding an entire app. <laughs> so I can already access these projects. They're not even, you know, part of what I should be accessing, but that's just a detail. So we'll leave that at that. But now I can go and create a new project and we'll actually see more than one user in the list, which is kind of neat. So that's all feeding in from that user.all bit right here. Now, this will not save at this point because we haven't actually permitted those parameters from coming in. So we still need to modify the project controller to accommodate. So all we need to do, we have user ID already. We can just add we could just change that to user IDs. And it needs to be passed like so. Since it's a collection of IDs, we'll end up needing to permit a collection of those. And that user ID attribute, we're just assigning automatically here. So it's not actually coming through the form. So we don't have to worry about permitting it so much. So you can actually remove it in this case. Now, what I want to do now is add like a collaborator portion to the, the project show page, and that'll just display any, any collaborators that get added when the new project is created. So much like our task, we'll have a, a, basically a spot that has this going on. I'll copy this, paste it, and just put collaborators. And one nice thing is we can check if the project has any users at all first, which by default, it's always going to have one because you're the user on the project. But, you know, real, real world, you would do something like this, I think. So here we'll just render project at users. Here's where that call comes in handy. So you would think it would be product users, but since we're doing that join model, we can just do users and still get access to those. So we'll say loop through the, each of those. And 
and we'll just say, I don't know, user.name. Assuming it's set. So if we create a new product now, this project I'll just add both of us and I have a syntax error. Oh, I just have, I need to say if dir. Okay, there we go. So now we have collaborators. They did save, which is good to, good to see. If we go to rails console, could say like project dot last dot users and it'll display both the users in a association. So it's me and John. Cool. So that part's working right now. Nothing really matters relative to that. Um, we can just display users at will though. And our tasks are working. Okay, now into the, the, I would say the nit and gritty part of the tutorial, we'll get into the mailer side of things. Uh, maybe I'll wait to the next video to start that just so it's a whole fresh topic. Like I said before, these projects aren't scoped to the project users. You might want to do that when you log in. So on the index action, instead of displaying all users, you might display or all products, you might display current user dot products. Maybe we could try that. So that's relative to the projects I belong to. Makes sense? Hopefully. Cool. Let's leave it at that. And the next video will start kicking off the mailing logic and getting the email subscription stuff I've been promising you in uh, going in. So I'll see you in that one. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information. 